We are back yet again with the Thick Bending Podcast. This will be giving you our conference championship game predictions. If you're enjoying this content, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, share us to all your little friends on social media, Facebook, Twitter, MySpace. We respect all forms of social media, most particularly those owned by the Chinese government. But starting things off with the NFC, we've got the Eagles squaring off against the 49ers. And we all saw what the Eagles did to the 40, or did to the Giants. They massacred them. It was embarrassing. As a Giants fan, you have to feel a great deal of shame seeing your team go into that game and lose the 38 to 7. Disgraceful, a ball. I would just be astounded, astounded if Dave won coach of the year. That's neither here nor there. What's important though is that Eagles offense is comparable to the 49ers. People talk about the 49ers weapons. Eagles got weapons in spades. Miles Sanders is that guy. Their alliance great. They've got two number one receivers and they got Jalen Hurts. They've got the advantage of quarterback. But on the other side, we've got the 49ers defense. We've got Nick Bosa, notorious for performing amazingly against African-American quarterbacks. Their secondary is full of Pro Bowl and All-Pro level talent. They've got the best linebacker in football. Their defensive line is solid across the board. And while I know the 49ers offense is going to put up points, and while I know the Eagles defense is going to be effective, it's going to be a matchup between the Eagles offense and the 49ers defense to determine who goes to the big game. And because my predictions have been so wildly inaccurate, and I refuse to actually research, I'm not going to stop picking with my heart. But I will refuse to pick with my brain because it'd be unfair to the rest of you. I'm going to flip a coin to decide who's going to the Super Bowl. So here we go. Heads Eagles, Tails 49ers. The Eagles are going to the Super Bowl. Jalen Hurts is going to triumph. He's going to persevere. He's going to put up 30 points on that 49ers defense. He's going to be electric. And he is going to silence the haters as he heads to his first big day. Now, I don't really know how to argue against a coin flip, but when it comes to taking a look at the Giants and Eagles game, I think it's something we all deep down expected. We know how good the Eagles are. A lot of people have been talking about how good the 49ers roster is just because they've been winning with a seventh round quarterback and their third string quarterback. But when you compare the two, it's relatively close. I mean, the Eagles have probably a better wide receiver one in AJ Brown. I think I would take him over both Debo and Brandon Ayuk. They have a very very good receiver and Devontae Smith sitting right behind him. If he's given a bigger opportunity to another team, maybe he's also capable of being an elite wide receiver one. Then there's Dallas Goddard, who I'd obviously choose George Kittle. Obviously, you're taking McCaffrey over Miles Sanders, but Miles Sanders, you know, he's done, he's been very successful in his limited opportunities had in his career, also mainly due to injuries, but he's done very good and did very good last week against the Giants. Really shined, was averaging, it felt like six to seven yards a carry, which was not fun to watch. <laughs> um, both offensive lines are great enjoy that both defenses are great the biggest difference between these two teams is that i'd give the edge to the 49ers defense they're giving up like 16 points a game they just shut down the cowboys offense made dak prescott look like a seventh round rookie and on the Eagles side of things there's been weak points this season now i know they just dominated the giants but we've seen the eagles defense bend more this season than we've seen the 49ers defense bend at points they're not very good at stopping the run at points their secondary has given up some plays Whereas the 49ers, they have been relatively bulletproof this season. Then the other difference is... The Eagles have the significantly better quarterback. I love Brock Purdy. I love what he has done. But Jalen Hurts is just that guy. I think he's proven that he belongs in, maybe belongs in the top five, definitely belongs in that top seven conversation. With the Eagles having the edge with Jalen Hurts, with the 49ers having the edge on defense, it provides an extremely interesting matchup, especially given how close the two teams are in talent. Now, after seeing what we saw last week, I don't think the Eagles are kind of on that downward slope. Like, you know, some people are throwing that in the discussion after week 18 because they didn't look great against the Giants third stringers but they once again asserted dominance the elite players showed why they're all considered elite and I think it opens up the door for them to win this game but my heart at the beginning of the playoffs I also picked the 49ers to win so I'm extremely conflicted I get the sense and I'm kind of dreading it that the Eagles are going to win I'm going to have to watch an NFC East rival in the Super Bowl but I'm I'm for the sake of this I'm going to stick with my prediction I think the 49ers defense is capable of limiting the Eagles enough and I think Brock Purdy is capable of getting McCaffrey Kittle Ayuk and Debo the ball so I've I kind of went back and forth there I'm I'm not going to be shocked if 
if either team wins, but I'm going to pick the 49ers. It's good to cover your bases, and you're picking the underdog in the 49ers, which transitions brilliantly into us advertising underdog fantasy, the ultimate fantasy experience on the market. If you use our exclusive code THICK, underdog will match your first deposit up to $100. It is an amazing fantasy experience. You can do pick'ems, you can do best ball tournaments, you can do anything your heart desires. I got my 63-year-old dad onto it. He's hooked on it. You guys will love it. Trust me, underdog fantasy, code THICK with two C's, $100 up to $100 in our first budget is matched. Free money. But no, the whole 49ers defense has uh, not broken at points. That's just incorrect. They gave up 34 to the Raiders, gave up 44 to the Chiefs, gave up about 30 points to the sorry Atlanta Falcons. And this 49ers D has had weaknesses at points in the year. And I think those weaknesses will be fully shown, fully exploited by the Eagles. The Birds are going to the Super Bowl. Let's go Birds, fly Eagles, fly. My one response to that is that the 49ers have won 12 games in a row. It's been a long time since their defense has been bad enough to give up more points than their offense has scored. And Brock Purdy, he we've really seen George Kittle kind of reemerge after over the last two seasons. I feel like he's not been consistent week in and week out. Now he's a consistent force in that offense was the biggest reason that offense put up points last week. And then Devo, he's getting things done. Brandon Ike, he's getting things done. If Brock Purdy can take care of the football, ball and get the ball out to the receivers the 49ers can win this game also just because of how good that defense is led by D'Amico Ryans as a DC the reason Kittle's getting more involved is because Brock Purdy as a young quarterback is relying more on his checkdowns and Kittle's having to go into motion as opposed to having to just stay in and block more often he's being used more heavily in the passing game as a part of the scheme by Shanahan we all know that in a perfect world Trey Lance or Jimmy Garoppolo would be just be throwing to Debo throwing to Ayuk throwing to McCaffrey throwing to the other running backs they got in there but Kittle is the safety Blake, and he's done a great job of being that. But not to get cyclical, we are going to bounce on over to the AFC unless you've got anything else you'd like to say about this game. Well, I don't really I don't really necessarily agree with that analysis on Brock Purdy. I think Brock Purdy's been certainly elevated by the talent around him, but I feel like we've seen him move to his second and third reads more than we'd expect from a rookie, let alone a seventh round pick. I think he's shown the ability to do that. Now, does he sometimes get ba- bailed out by his elite offensive line because he gets more time in the pocket than some other quarterbacks? do yes does get bailed out by the fact his players are so open sometimes or they're open on the second and third reads because of Kyle Shannon's offense and the talent that's on the offense yes but I feel like we've seen certain things from him that show he could be a very good quarterback now he is young and I, I still think obviously Jalen when Hurts did I miles. say he wouldn't be a good quarterback I says we're lying on his check downs because he'll starts off throwing a block then slips out yeah but we've seen him push the ball down the field more than Jimmy G ever did I don't really necessarily I don't agree with that that point well it's okay we don't all watch tape but on to a tail of the tape we see the Cincinnati Bengals facing off against the Kansas City Chiefs and when you think about these two teams you think about their quarterbacks and you think about their offenses both teams have a ton of offensive talent the receivers on the Bengals a bit more prominent than the receivers on the Chiefs but the Chiefs also have the greatest tight end in football one of the best receiving tight ends ever in Travis Kelsey and of course they've got the advantage of quarterback in Patrick Mahomes and you can bring up head-to-head record all you want Patrick Mahomes can be 0-85 and against Joe Burrow in his career he's still better than Joe Burrow Burrow saw on that number two maybe the number three spot in the NFL right now but he's just not Patrick Mahomes get used to it Neither of these teams is an amazing defense. The Bengals defense is better. They do tend to rise in the playoffs but this is going to be a showcase of offensive firepower at Arrowhead State. And I feel like picking the Chiefs to win is a safe thing to do. I feel confident in that. I feel like the Bengals bit overrated. It's time the Patrick Mahomes beats Joe Burrow. They've gotten lucky the past few times, and Mahomes is a playoff riser. I think he's going to rise, but it would be unfair to the 49ers and the Eagles if I did not also flip a coin for this game. So, in defense of that, Chiefs are going to be heads, the uh, Bengals are going to be tails. Bengals have tails, they're Tigers, Chiefs Arrowhead Stadium. That was a terrible flip. Oh, that's unfortunate. So the Bengals are going to the Super Bowl. And as you can see, Joe Burrow owns Patrick Mahomes in the head-to-head matchup. The Bengals defense is way better than the Chiefs. Their receivers are better. Jamar Chase is going to hit the great, hit the name, hit the salsa even on every single Chiefs going back who tries to get in his way. T. Higgins is too good. Their tight end game is too good. Their running game is too good. Joe Mixon is a beast. He's better than anything. Even Isaiah Pacheco, the Chiefs are going to lie up in the backfield. The Chiefs offense is just more balanced. They've got a better attack. And Joe Burrow is just better in general than Patrick Mahomes. So, Bengals the Super Bowl. (laughs) Well, we certainly saw quite the flip-flop there. Um, Now... 
much like the Eagles and 49ers matchup, I was much more impressed last week by what Joe Burrow and that Bengals offense accomplished. They went into Buffalo in the snow and Joe Burrow was throwing darts all over the field. He seemingly didn't care that the ball had snow on it. He didn't care that the conditions were terrible. He got the ball to Jamar Chase. He got the ball to Teagans. He got the ball to Hayden Hurst, who had, I think, probably his best game of the season. And then on the ground, they dominated the Bills front seven. So I was extremely impressed with what the Bengals did last week. And on the flip side, with the Chiefs, I'm not feeling great about them heading into this game. When you lose Patrick Mahomes, you lose his mobility. You see what that offense becomes. He's the one who elevates all the talent around him. And Travis Kelsey's also the one who, he was that's, he was a security blanket in that game. But he's also the one who opens up the rest of their receiving core and the rest of their offense. So if Patrick Mahomes doesn't have his mobility and won't be able to make some of those throws to Kelsey and then not be able to make some of those throws down the field, like we saw him struggling throwing screen passes to his running back last week. So if he's not able to do that, I don't really see how they're going to be able to win this game with how good Joe Burrow looked last week against the Bills, who are probably, I don't know if I'd say that. I was going to say they're probably the best matchup out of any of the, any of the teams had last week, but that's that doesn't bode well playing this Bengals team whose defense is solid I will say another thing that was encouraging about the Chiefs last week is when Patrick Mahomes went down with that injury is that the defense stayed up and showed that they're ca- capable of making stops because I think most of us would probably agree the Chiefs have maybe the weakest defense left out of the four teams and when There's you're no playing this elect- they do have the weakest defense they do have, <laughs> so they do have the weakest defense I just don't know how that Bengals defense stacks up maybe statistically although we know statistics aren't everything but I was extremely encouraged what they showed last week against a Jaguars offense that came from 27 points down to hold them at bay, create turnovers, stop Trevor Lawrence, while Patrick Mahomes was forced to hobbling to handoffs on outside zones, uh, throwing off his front leg on screen passes, not even getting the ball there, and then just throwing checkdowns and diving for first downs on no ankle. I feel like the Bengals are going to win, but just for the sake of being contrarian, and I know we're, <laughs> I guess we're picking the teams we don't really feel like are winning this week. As our winners, I'm going to pick the Chiefs. I'm picking with my pre-playoff predictions, Chiefs 49ers Super Bowl. I want to see it happen again. I want to see a rematch from a couple seasons ago. I want to see Mahomes go at Brock Purdy. I want to see the 49ers defense get a crack at Patrick Mahomes. I'm picking the Chiefs to win. Well, make no mistake, I actually do think the Eagles are going to win, but here's the deal. While I'm shackled by this piece of metal, I will say, if you think Patrick Mahomes is still going to be as hobbled one week after the injury, after being around the best physical care in the world surrounding his ankle, after he's been shown moving well, walking around the stadium, jogging in practice. I think you're a bit insane. Is he going to be the full 100% Patrick Holmes? Probably not, but he's not going to be hobbling to the huddle, hopping on one leg. He's not going to be struggling as much as we saw last week. He's still going to be able to plant and throw the ball. He might not be as mobile, but he's still going to have that absolute bazooka of an arm and have full access to it. He looks good in the footage I've seen of him in interviews and practices. So in it, I'm not exactly sure what he's showing in an interview that'll uh, make oh, you simply, think he Oh, simply, can... walks off the stage, smooth as can be, is strolling <laughs> off the podium back into the locker room. You laugh, there's no favoring one leg or the other. It's just as calm, simple walk. When he watched him at practice, it's just calm, simple jogging. It was not a great deal of hitting and hobbling. He's gonna be fine. The jog, if I'm being honest, which I just saw before we recorded this, it looks a bit stiff to me. So, that is oh, something that is, keep in mind, talk. I'm... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Keep in mind of picking the Chiefs to win, but when we're talking about, we're talking specifically about his ankle, a slow jog around the stadium is extremely different compared to ex- uh, trying to explode off your right leg and do an outside zone handoff, or try and sprint up the middle to get four yards, or move around in the pocket. Those are two well, completely different things. Well, it's a good thing it's Wednesday then. He went from hobbling on a Sunday to a jog on Wednesday. He'll be at running and sprinting by Friday or Saturday. You don't have faith in the modern medicine. It's okay. You're more of a witch doctor type guy. I use those too, but we don't <laughs> need to get It's not modern that. medicine. It's just concern, especially given what they're up against. A Bengals team that, I, in my opinion, is way better than what they faced last season, and they lost to them this season already. Well, you should be concerned because you're going up against this little piece of metal in the debate. I'd be worried. Let me see. What type of quarter is this? This is... Is a Michigan quarter. Oh, look at the coincidence. A Michigan quarter. It's a shame the Detroit Lions are in the playoffs or it would have favored them to win by a wide margin. That has been our AFC Championship game and AFC Championship game prediction. Let us know what you think down in the comment section below. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Any support tremendously appreciate. You guys rock. You've got great hairlines. You would make great picks on Underdog Fantasy and we will see you in the very near future.